Welcome to The Bo Show, the home of faith, family, and freedom. The pop singer Madonna has been a fixture in music and culture ever since the 1980s. I'm an 80s kid, so naturally I was aware of her, though I have to say, I never paid much attention to her. I was raised in Memphis, Tennessee, where the Sun and Stax greats dominated the scene, but I was more interested in Rod Stewart, Billy Joel, Chicago, and Garth Brooks than Madonna. I started taking classical piano lessons around age four and was dancing to Michael Jackson's Beat It and Billie Jean with a toy that I used as a makeshift microphone. So admittedly, I did not have the same infatuation with Madonna that many people did at that time. She's been dubbed the queen of pop, which already brings themes of royalty into her description. But today I want to review who she really is and why she's taken a step beyond typical sensationalism. We all know that pop culture likes to create idols and icons. Elvis Presley was the king of rock and roll, although he always referred to the real king as Jesus Christ. Michael Jackson was the king of pop. Aretha Franklin is the queen of soul. James Brown was the godfather of soul. Prince was, well, Prince. There's a certain level of hype that comes with these titles. Madonna, in being the queen of pop, has a certain fanfare about her. She's one of the most well-documented figures of the modern age, as her music and persona have dominated cultural, musical, sexual, political, and religious themes. Madonna was born to Catholic parents in 1958 and confirmed in the Catholic Church in 1966. She attended St. Frederick's and St. Andrew's Catholic Elementary Schools in Michigan, and was known for her good grades, but she was also known for her provocativeness, often lifting up her skirt to show her underwear. Her father put her in classical piano lessons, but she found a better fit with classical dance and began ballet. She moved to New York City to pursue dance with very little money in her pocket, and one night while walking home was held to knife point, being forced to perform sex acts. She recalled that incident to be, quote, a taste of my weakness. It showed me that I still could not save myself in spite of all the strong girls show. I could never forget it, unquote. In the early 80s, she began to influence culture, especially girls, wearing lace tops, skirts over capri pants, fishnet stockings, jewelry bearing the crucifix, bracelets, and bleached hair. Her first big album was 1984's Like a Virgin. The performance of that song in the MTV Video Music Awards in a white wedding dress rolling around on the floor certainly bucked norms and conventions. Nude photos of her from the 70s were published by Penthouse and Playboy in 1985, which Madonna remained unapologetic about, saying she needed money at the time. In 1989, Madonna began working with Pepsi and debuted her song, Like a Prayer, the lead single and title track from her fourth studio album. The music video featured Catholic symbols such as stigmata and cross burning and a dream of making love to a saint, leading the Vatican to condemn the video. Pepsi revoked the commercial and canceled her sponsorship contract in response to the backlash. In response to the overt sexuality of her blonde ambition world tour, she stated, The tour in no way hurts anybody's sentiments. It's for open minds and gets them to see sexuality in a different way, their own and others. Her greatest hits compilation album was titled The Immaculate Collection, another reference to Catholic imagery. She simultaneously released her fifth studio album, Erotica, with her coffee table book sex. Sadomasochism and bondage were continual themes in this album. In 1993, Madonna rubbed the Puerto Rican flag between her legs and also handed David Letterman her underwear on air. After the birth of her child Lourdes, she became involved in Eastern mysticism and Kabbalah. In her 2006 Confessions World Tour, Madonna used religious symbols such as the crucifix and crown of thorns in the performance of Live to Tell. It caused the Russian Orthodox Church and the Federation of Jewish Communities of Russia to urge all their members to boycott her concert. 
Madonna famously supported Hillary Clinton's 2016 failed presidential campaign, and when she lost, she made a speech at the Women's March in Washington, D.C., saying the following. Yes, I'm angry. Yes, I am outraged. Yes, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. She says that was taken wildly out of context? Really? For all of the work that Madonna had tried to do in Malawi and adopting kids from there, we have to state the irony of Hillary Clinton's work in Libya with Gaddafi, as well as the violent threat to blow up the White House. She also has donated a million dollars to the highly controversial Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And this is all just preamble to her latest stint, posing as the Virgin Mary and as Jesus in the latest edition of Vanity Fair Italia. The 64-year-old is on the cover, posing as the mother of sorrows, with seven swords piercing her heart, representing the seven sorrows of Mary, classic Catholic iconography. She also poses three times in this photo shoot as Jesus in the Last Supper, posing alongside half-naked women holding up bread, which references the matzo that Christ broke, symbolizing his body, which was pierced for mankind. In this particular image, Madonna holds a woman lustfully, symbolically of St. John, as wine is spilled on the table. While it seems that all the disciples in this image are women, second to the left is what appears to be a male, or, I don't know, could be a transgender person. A woman behind Madonna appears to be in a drug-like trance, while other women are wearing cardboard, almost Burger King-like crowns one of which has the word caution on it. And in the photo breaking bread, we see what looks like a debaucherous display of gluttony, one of the seven deadly sins, and where a very busty female disciple poses like a dog on the table with wine dripping down her. Could that also be symbolic of a blood ritual? Madonna's eyes pierce the screen more like Lucifer than the compassionate eyes of Christ. In this image, Madonna has various dolls all over her depicting dead children or voodoo dolls of some sort. You can see that on the far right that one of the dolls is decapitated. This imagery is particularly disturbing in the wake of Balenciaga's major mea culpa when it placed children in the same photo with BDS and M bondage bear bags, which they ended up pulling. It's the finer details that you have to notice. There are many things that I could say about each of these images, but they are all disturbing. Remember that the fetishism of children has come into sharp focus in recent days, especially in the wake of Jeffrey Epstein and the other pedophilia rings. What was once just conspiracy theory is now proven fact, that elite circles have a certain fetishization of young children. And I think that has a lot to do with the vulnerability and innocence of children who can be abused and manipulated for adults' pleasure. This image of Madonna with all these doll heads is particularly disturbing because it's so intentional, it's so brazen in its imagery. Why are there seven doll heads right by Madonna's private area? Her skeletal ribs are made of baby hands. This tiny open hand, I think, carries a troublesome metaphor of the open hand the willingness, the succumbing, and then the two real models posing as marionettes. They are faceless. It's as though their entire personas have been wiped out. Nothing in fashion is unintentional. Everything has a purpose. Balenciaga lied when it said that the photo shoot was done without their consent. This edition of Vanity Fair Italia is called the icon issue. Madonna is their idea of an icon, even more. She's an idol, a false prophet of sorts. Professor Soot Jolly has referred to her as an almost sacred feminist icon. The Guardian's Matt Cain says she has been a cult figure within self-propelling subcultures. According to lesbian feminist Sheila Jeffries, Madonna represents woman's occupancy of what Monique Wittig calls the category of sex as powerful and appears to gleefully embrace the performance of the sexual corvée allotted to women. So remember these definitions. 
because the media has been instrumental in propelling her iconography. In the interview for Vanity Fair Italia, it titles the spread, The Enlightenment. Photographers Luigi and Iango photographed her over two days with a crew of over 80 people. In the world and the religion of self-idolatry, many disciples are needed. When asked what this career has cost her to be where she is, she responds, how much did it cost me? Lack of rest, giving up on security, ending all relaxation, goodbye to a comfortable life, lack of sleep, zero peace of mind, inability to spend time with the people I love. Yet this was the journey I had to take. Yet this was the cost I decided to pay. And let me be clear, I paid for it down to the last penny. Now let's think about this in terms of the photo shoot imagery. She is portraying the Virgin Mary and Jesus, who paid the entire cost of mankind by his death. Madonna seems to be taking on that level of bold sacrilege 